everyone, Eugene Morris from TheBrotherhoodOfGaming.com, and look what I got for Christmas. I have to admit, I did not see this coming, but my lovely wife was nice enough to give me an Oculus Quest 2. Now I do admit, I've never before had much of an interest in virtual reality, because I've always been very old school when it comes to my gaming. You know what I mean. A console, a cartridge, a controller, a TV. The basics. But VR takes things to a different level, and it just seems that only recently has the technology managed to reach a point where we can really exploit it and provide a true alternate gaming experience. Hell, the nice thing about this too is that you don't have to be a gamer to enjoy it. There are tons of immersive videos that can put you right in the middle of space, the ocean, you name it. The VR system is also a nice way to get a workout and work up a real sweat. Just remember to wipe off the sweat when you're done. Now, according to my wife, she got this for me the day of Christmas, and was really based on a suggestion from my brother-in-law. Now, during Thanksgiving, he was telling us stories about his friend, who has one. Funny thing, too, is that when I first opened it, my initial thought was, okay, how am I going to plug this thing into my television? Yeah, that's not necessary. Once you make some room to play in, you strap it on your head, and with the controllers, you create a guardian. This is a space where you can play in. If you get too close to boundaries, you will get a visual cue to back up so you don't accidentally hit something. Once that is set, well, it's off to the races. You also need an account with Facebook as well. Now, when not using it, it's a good idea to keep it charged up. Like my brother-in-law said, if you aren't playing it, you should be charging it. Well, with this new setup, what would be a good first game for me to try? Well, thanks to Season 2 of The Mandalorian, my love of Star Wars has been revived. So a clear choice was Vader Immortal a new VR series from Lucasfilm that puts you in the shoes of a novice Force user under duress from Darth Vader. And here's my review. In Vader Immortal, you take control of a nameless smuggler. The game starts with you escaping the huts on your ship, the Windfall, along with your trusty droid partner, friend, maybe lover? I don't know. Things have gotten kind of weird with Star Wars since Disney took over. You are then brought to Mustafar, and are captured by the Empire. There, you come face to face with the Lord of the Sith. We soon find out that the smuggler is a descendant of Lady Corvax, who centuries ago used the Bright Star to try and resurrect her dead husband, but instead turned the planet into the hellhole that it is. Vader is planning on using the star's power along with the Eon Engine to bring back his dead wife Padme. Your role in this plan? Your blood unlocks its power. As your force abilities start to expand, it's up to you to stop Vader from using the power which would result in the planet's destruction along with its inhabitants. The story is written by David Goyer, the scribe behind the Dark Knight movies, and is considered canon in the Star Wars lore. Although I do admit I have some doubts about that, as I'm not sure how seamlessly it fits in between the events of Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. But as a standalone plot in a one-shot action game, it does fit the bill. I do appreciate them giving Mustafar, one of my favorite planets in Star Wars, a little bit of backstory. The characters are simple, but done well. Especially Vader's creepy sidekick General, who comes off as even more intimidating than Vader at times. While the droid companion is fun, I did cringe when I heard her say, My bad. Man, that's dated. Call me a stick in the mud, but I don't like modern references and yo mama jokes in Star Wars. They just feel out of place. Now for the good stuff. Vader Immortal is a three-part series in which each part costs about $10 a pop. For the control scheme, when it is your time to move, you hold the right trigger stick to make a blue mark appear. When you let go of the trigger, you will move to that spot automatically. This action works fine enough, but there are other games I played in which you move instantly in a run or walk by holding the trigger forward. I do prefer that function. But I guess with this, it keeps you more in a single spot to keep you from the borders. By keeping you away from the edges, it will give you room to swing your lightsaber. There are sections where you'll need to climb and gain access to terminals, but the meat and potatoes are the lightsaber combat. With the lightsaber, you can swing to attack, perform combos, block incoming strikes, and deflect blaster fire. And it feels great. Remember being a kid and swinging around your cheap toy saber you got from Toys R Us? This feels like the grown-up version of that, but while you do feel cool while you're doing it, just remember, on the outside, you look like this.
In latter episodes, you unlock your Force powers, which adds another dimension to the fighting. In fact, using the Force to pull and push enemies is often the best option. Another fun thing you can do is pull blasters towards you and fire them in small bursts. I love doing that. Now the main thing is the story mode, and you cannot really die or get defeated. Not really. It's really like you're participating in a movie or a TV series. That is the experience that it is going for. Overall, there is only about 90 minutes worth of content here. But you know what, not every game needs to be Breath of the Wild long in order for you to enjoy it. What is here gives you that first person Star Wars combat, which is what makes it worth playing. Another section in this game are the lightsaber dojos. Here you use your powers to beat a bunch of enemies. A nice wrinkle is that you can unlock rewards such as different sabers and equipment. Simple, yet enjoyable. The music for this game is... well, it's Star Wars. You like Star Wars music? Then you should like what's here. That's all I really got to say about that. Now the graphics in this game is what really knocked my socks off. The look of this game really puts you right in the middle of the Star Wars universe. There are also some spots in this game that are quite dark, which featured moments in which even the dopey stormtroopers became intimidating. Now while it does have a great look, there are some glitches here and there. For instance, there were moments where my hand would act weird and suddenly be over my head or far off in the distance and then suddenly come right back to its normal position. Weird. But overall, it does look great. And it does represent the part of the Star Wars universe that I'm really into. The darker underbelly. And now it's time for the final call. Is it a buy or a sell? Simulates the feeling of being in the Star Wars universe. Fun lightsaber combat with dark graphics. Only about 90 minutes worth of content. The Oculus was an unexpected gift, but not at all an unappreciated one. There are also other games on this device that I'm really looking forward to playing. Unfortunately, I cannot try the VR function of the games on Steam because my PC is a dinosaur, but I can still play the games that are exclusive to this machine. Now, opinions on Lucasfilm's current handling of the Star Wars franchise is controversial to say the least, but stuff like this is proof that there's still good Star Wars content out there. It is short and sweet. Get you in and get you out. And it's worth looking into. I say give it a try if you have access to an Oculus and are a diehard Star Wars fan. Now, if you are interested in my reviews of other VR games, please let me know in the comments below. You've been watching the BrotherhoodGaming.com show. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe, like, comment, and share. And as always, remember, keep on gaming.